Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestriate War using or playing with the recent update at the time of recording, Shores of Zebrica 2.0, and which we're playing as everyone's favorite water nation, at least for now, Hippogriffia, and which we're led by Queen Novo. If you'd like to read about her, please go right ahead, but we got to talk about ministers disagreeing. A disagreement in a budgeting committee has spiraled into an all-out row between two of our ministers. Sea Pony Seafoam and Hippogriff Windlands have both come to the government to resolve the dispute, which was over package transport funding meant to connect towns in Mount Aris and Sequestria. Given the immense differences in the infrastructure needed by Sea Ponies and Hippogriffs, neither the minister is happy with the current arrangement. They have demanded we split the funding, with each minister arguing that the race has more complicated infrastructure requirements and thus should get the larger share of the funding. Now, we've got this whole thing between Sea Ponies and Hippogriffs. So, our society is divided between Mount Terrace and Sequestria. While we're able to transform between our Sea Pony Hippogriff forms thanks to the Shards of Noble Pearls, Noble's Pearl of Transformation, which every Hippogriff carries, the overwhelming majority of resistance spend nearly all the time in one form or another. This leads to different cultures, different ways of life, different economic and infrastructural needs, and a different attitude towards the world. Sea ponies see very little to gain from the outside world, since no one but us makes things for undersea living. While the Hippogriffs mostly desire increased interaction with the broader world, we must balance these distinct needs, or different needs, lest we fall into civil strife. So, we can side with one side, but piss off the other, and basically cost more political power and stability. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, and for this campaign, at least, um, my goal is to make sure that well, we stay pretty much balanced the entire time. We're placating the isolations currently, though. The isol isolationist policies have long been championed by the sea ponies, who view recent events as evidence that we should stick with isolationism instead of opening up. If we were, only, if we were to make progress, we should have to make sure that they are placated. And we had, had splendid isolationism, which is even worse. Get more stability. The stability bonus will be removed upon the removal of splendid isolation. We will move our divided society towards the total sea pony control currently. Um, sea pony control. I'm gonna side with hippogriffs for now. Have we get more sea pony control? So we have the royal land of Nova, which is pretty good. Pretty, I like it. And we have hippogriff leanings for divided society. So, but the Zoomidian tank trials. Over the past few weeks, the army has been trialing various proposals for tank designs in Zoomidia. After a victory over the Storm King, the army searched for the latest advances in land warfare from around the world. Of particular interest was Stalingrad's use of tanks during the revolution. Royal Island Arsenal has been hard at work developing a series of proposed tank designs and experimenting with how best to integrate them into our land forces. The original T1 prototype was scraped early in development, but the T2 and T3 prototypes are looking promising. The T2 is a small, fast light tank with a crew of four. It has 16mm of armor and a max speed of 72 km, uh, kilometers per hour on roads. The T3, but, though, it's the exact opposite, a joint collaboration with Equestria. T3 is designed with a crew of 10 and has a maximum speed of 10 kilometers per hour over roads. With seven guns, it is built to overwhelm the enemy with superior firepower as it advances with the infantry rather than outmaneuvering the enemy lines. A third contestant also entered the trial, Klobik, an eccentric inventor and racing car driver, submitted his own designs based purely on speed. Well, more likely armored than either the two th T3 or T4. Uh, T4, oh god, T2 or T3. Tides tank support, uh, supports a crew of two. It's armored with 37mm cannon and an astonishing speed of 120 km per hour on roads. But army analysts are not com confident they could be standing up to any form of anti tank weapons that would be too liable to face, or would be liable to face, so it faces a stiff opposition. Now, as the trial's concluded, a decision must be taken. Which design will the army adopt? Light tank? Heavy tank. Or Klobig's on or something? You get a light, basic light tank chassis, converted, converted tractor engines, and a variant of the Klobig tank. Well, light tank, medium heavies. Um, converted tractor engines. You get that one done anyways? That's kind of nice, actually. Um, heavy tank. Honestly, if we're going to use tanks, we'll probably use heavy tanks. And use them as flame tanks, maybe. So, I'll we'll, we'll, we'll go with that one. So, yay! Uh, so, yeah. Sequestria is a vast underwater realm that's almost untouchable to the surface dwellers. Few even know if it's there. Its cities on the ocean floor are just as large and developed as those on the surface, and the sea ponies are masters of life under the waves. While building industry underwater may seem odd at first, it would be foolish enough to include half of the nation or economic growth. As long as our kingdom remains united, we will both prosper with the right investments. Crack Lightning returns. Aviator and Storm War Hero. Uh, crack lighting touched on at Queen Novo Airport this morning to an awakening crowd or waiting crowd of reporters and fans. It's just the custom built aeroplane, the spirit of Starfield gleamed in the morning light as if a taxi to the par parking, parking spot. A three month solo tour of the world has just been the talk of Hippogriffia, with many wondering what he discovered beyond the borders of the island. As words to report from Air's Post have been reprinted in numerous outlets, as celebrities turned them into a rallying cry for the isolationist elements within Hippogriffia. There are many great sites in the wider world, Karth and Chief among them, but I must say on the whole, the Storm King's barbarism is the rule rather than the exception outside of a fair nation. They have very little to offer us except for endless isms, communism, liberalism, republicanism, all ideas which griffins and even ponies kill each other over every other day. 
or every day. We need to remain strong in the face of this violent new world and reject these foreign ideas which disrupt our peaceful way of life. Big world out there, more hypocrites should experience it. Because right now we're currently towards hypocrite leaning. We should listen to his concerns. Communism. Oh, more political podcast. Um, listen to his concerns. Reporting military aviation during the storm war. All the armed services played their roles during the reclamation of Hippogriffia's territory from the Storm King. However, special mention should be made about the Air Force's actions during the war. Barring the support and cover provided the Navy and Army in their various battles, it was also instrumental in the final defeat of the Storm King's army during the Battle of Ain Throtgorot. Air superiority had been in the Hippogriffians' claws since the beginning of their surprise war on the Storm King's forces when they quickly and efficiently overwhelmed the Storm King's air force, most of which was grounded, not expecting a large enemy force to appear from the, beneath the ocean. During the final battle, the air force ensured that all the Storm King's airships were destroyed. These airships uh, played an important part in the Storm King's campaigns as it gave him a tactical and strategic advantage over his enemies, carrying large amounts of warriors, materials, and weapons at a fairly fast pace, easily outmaneuvering his opponents and positioning his forces to deliver crushing attacks on the weak points. These same airships, however, weren't quick enough to face the lightning strikes of the biplanes which composed the Air Force. One of, many, one of the many airships to join the scrapyard was the flagship of the Storm King being destroyed by Crack Lightning himself, who was allowed as a hero for his actions that day. Together with other branches of the military and provi providential help from the element bearers, the Storm King's rampage through Zeb Zebrica. Uh, came to an end. Peace and harmony returned to Hippogriffia. The tactics employed by the Air Force during the war still taught in our nation's military colleges and serve as an important building block all pilots must master to ensure the integrity of our skies. We rule the skies. Now, is it Zebrica or Zebrica? I'll kind of call it Zebrica for now, but I guess we'll see. Whoa. We have only 10 air XP, but we can already get this. Base cost. Cost, re cost reduction bonus. Hip storm experience. Wait, what? We're a Hippogriff race. Negligible poverty, negligible literacy, modern society. Wait, what? Is that? I don't understand. Wait, we, we only have 10 because I was trying to train some stuff from pilot exercises, but. Under current underwater buildings, that's actually really nice. I want to build more, and we will eventually, but. Increase investment. Uh, also, we have sea pony conscription. Uh, Sequestria. As home to a vast population of millions of sea ponies, while many of them hold isolation views, they are solar subjects, so they will serve in a military when the need arises. As a two equal parts of one united nation, Aris, or Aris, but probably Aris, Sequestria and Sequestria must share the burden of the conscription evenly. So, 1.5% of population. Dead sea ponies cannot be demobilized, so um, it is what it is. Um, I don't. I mean, I'm going to take advantage of it if we can. We only have bombers. Flying formation. Cost reduction bonus. Uh, I mean, I'll take it. Sure. So this will help out the uh, C-Pony leanings. Let's give it C-Pony leanings. Oh, uh, C-Pony autarky. Which, I mean, there's three routes here, but I'm going to go Harmony for now, just because that seems like the, you know, that's cool. I think I left this on Historical as well. I can't remember. So we could go Communist route, or we can go with Empower the Aris first. Aris first. So, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing things. I already know I am. Foreign Literature and Universities. Ever since we exposed ourselves to the outside world after so long, uh, our long sequester and sequestria, foreign products have been coming into Hippogriffia. Perhaps the most important of these are books and the ideas they hold. From the works of literature to science to philosophy, our younger generation are voraciously devouring the new reading material, and as they do so, they pick up some of the ideas and make them their own. Of greatest concern to us are the political ideas they've been absorbing. While Hippogriffia has always been a stable absolute monarchy, many among the younger generation are now discovering that there are other ways of organizing society. Ranging from constitutionalism, to republicanism, to nationalism, to even the most radical ideas such as fascism and communism. Right now, their curiosity is intellectual, but we know how fast these intellectual ideas can take hold, and threat they could even eventually pose their rule. We should keep an eye on this. So, I kind of want to designate trade ports. Um, because it seems like more, I don't know, universal education is good. Anti-harmonic activities seems like the exact one we shouldn't do for this campaign, since we're going to go uh, harmony anyways. So, we can still go that way, but it is what it is. So, designate trade ports. Contrary to what some claim, we're not looking to stick our heads in the sand and ignore the outside world. The city of Wingarden, Howlington, and Canterford will be dedicated to trade with the outside world, and although it can still be part of the world while watching its influence on us. Um, that's pretty good. Monthly population, 25%. Booming economy, get more political power. I like that too. We'll reduce the time to build underwater civilian factories by 14 days. I want a univer universal education first to get that research slot, and then the stock exchange. Every child born in a nation has the right to be given a full education, both on land and in the sea, whether rich or poor. And whether sea pony or hippogriff, we cannot leave anyone behind. At least for now. Maybe eventually. Um, trade with these guys, that'd be good and all, but, you know, whatever. We're still trying to build up some civvies, we have no fuel. What else is new? You know what? We want to train a, I want to train a lot, actually, so. Um, no one has fuel, okay. Oh, well, crap. What is this? Maximum consumption, current consumption is 60. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, oh, God, no. 
See pony leanings? It is what it is, you know. But you know what? Even with a literal third continent added to this, uh, this just this amazing mod, like Equestry Rewards, like, in my opinion, one of the best mods ever created for Equestry Reward. Just it's ridiculously good. Like the devs have done an extremely good job. Like I cannot praise it enough. But it still runs pretty darn smoothly for having three different continents. But anyways, the socials and liberal clubs. New ideas are spreading across Hippogriffia, brought in by a renowned contact with the outside world. Clubs have formed discussing and spreading these ideas, which range from liberal ideas of free trade and representative government inspired by the Griffonian three principles to more radical ones. Syndicalist writings, both of the national revolutionary varieties, from Wing Body and Aquila have attracted readers, and some clubs even promote communist ideas um, imported from Stalingrad. <clears throat> Although none have been called out yet for anything violent, most of the membership of these clubs consists of curious young griffs prone to experimentation, as well as new older ones who are dissatisfied with the monarchy and its handling of the Storm King's invasion. Right to exist, order that they should be shut down. Right now we're balanced. Um, the next one we will do. Move friends. Having friends is good. The mountain away. So we'd be war for this one. Yeah, we'll get there eventually. Um, lose our tourism industry as soon as we enter a state of war. More political power would be nice. It doesn't really matter which way. It's right to order them to be shut down. We could be leaning towards sea pony stuff. We lose 5% stability, and I don't like that. It's a right to exist. Also, we can have Sea Pony Primacy, or we can do Hippogriff Primacy. So we get other options here, um, just to see what it's like. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm not opposed to either one, really. I kind of want to go with this one, because I won't really... I almost never use Cruiser subs, because I heard they're pretty good. They're similar to, like, 1940s or the third tier sub, or something roughly like that, but I also like this one, too. Um, yeah, I think I might go this the right side here. Lessons from the enemy. Not bad. The Aris or Aris First Committee. A group of veterans, protectionists, economists, economists, and community activists gathered together today to announce the formation of the Aris First Committee. A group dedicated to preserving traditional hippogriffian values and protecting our economy from foreign takeover. The most prominent leader was Sea Pony, Raph Wood, the Queen's former advisor who had first proposed the move to Sequestria, and the hippogriff flying ace Crack Lightning, who gave a patriotic speech at the opening of the committee. Mount Eris sounds tall, and like the mountain, we must stand alone. We cannot depend on foreigners to help us, and neither should they depend on us. We've always been strong, self-sufficient, and proud of our cultures and traditions, and the Eris First Committee will see that this stays true into the 11th century and beyond. It was met with thunderous applause, launched into the second half of his speech with even more vigor. Liberal intellectuals will have us believe that harmony means of opening our markets and our borders to every creature, or funneling money and resources into charity projects in the North and Zeprican mandate. I believe uh, harmony means uh, a well-ordered, self-sufficient society that looks after its own. Eris first stands for the auto worker who is tired of seeing foreign cars drive their wages down, for the veteran tired of zeb zebras accusing us of cowardice when we defeated the Storm King, for the small business owner tired of competing with foreign conglomerates who will cheat the market. More than that, Eris first stands for our culture, our values, our history, and for a bright future for all hippogriffia. Many newspapers denounce Eris first as xenophobic, backwards, or fear-mongering. Still, their membership is quickly swelling, particularly in Sequestria, where sea ponies see very little to gain from international trade as there are few foreign products they want, and many are concerned about underwater manufacturing being unable to compete with industrial giants in Equestria and Griffonia. It's good to see them standing up for our own values. Hmm. Towards sea pony control, huh? A non aligned will become Eris first, which is already there. Interesting. Crack lightning for supremacist. I like supremacy. Razorback, or Razorbeak, gains supremacist sympathizer. We must accept progress and not seek to shut out the world. Well, we'll lose political power towards hippogriff control. I don't want to lose political power. We get more political power if we do this one too. Um, where are we balanced? Are we balanced? Yeah, we're balanced. Move that one. Because I want to come over here and get Silver Stream because. Oh no, Raph Wood. Oh, as long as we're not communists. It was a Queen Neville's advisor during the Storm War. As he only first suggested the evacuation of Sequestria. He seen as a calm voice in an uncalm age, though his status as a founding member of the Heirs First Committee has raised some eyebrows, and many disparage him as a symbol of weakness. I want him for the political power. That's literally it. Because we got, we're got, we going to spend a lot of political power in this campaign. I like to spend a lot of political power anyways, but whatever. Oh, is this a little cheaper? Uh, build water. Underwater city. 150 days, good God. Because after that, I do want Silverstream as well. Get more stability would be nice. More daily harmony support would be pretty good as well. Help offset all these people who want to be doing other stuff here too. It's not bad. The anti-harmonic committee's activity? Well, maybe next time. Because we'll have like at least three campaigns with Hippogriffia itself. And we've got a lot of stuff to do here anyways, so. We'll see. I would like to get some army XP as well. That's mobilization speed, which is fine. War attack is nice. Army drill, hmm, not bad. Maybe the slow army logistics is okay. Arcus flame feather is definitely one, the one guy we want to go with. Um, not bad. The first socialist conference. 
The socialist book clubs have been spreading out the, outside the universities, as idealistic students try to spread their ideas among the general populace. While well, many of these groups profess harmonic socialist and democratic socialist ideas and want to work with the government to implement socialist economics and hypogryphia, there's an undercurrent of sedition in these groups, as well as they all want as much devotion or devolution of power away from the monarchy as the liberals do, more alarmingly. Some of these groups openly call for a complete transformation of hypogryphia. The more radical groups are gaining popularity among the poor, seaponies, and hypocrites who are skeptical of the possibility of reform. The largest of these radicals among the seaponies are anarchists, who call for a complete abolition of the state, and claim to represent the natural way of life of the seaponies advocating for democratic and non-hierarchical non uh, school-based living. Meanwhile, the most popular group among the hypocrites is a communist faction which emerged around a charismatic and eccentric seapony named Pulsada, who claims that hypocrisia is uniquely suited to achieving a post-scarcity society, but only if it's transformed into a revolutionary dictatorship of the proletariat. While these groups are currently small, their membership is rapidly growing, and news has reached that they are planning a conference to debate their ideas and form a coalition of some kind, presumably organized around whichever faction's ideas prove most persuasive. C cracking down will do us more harm than good. Hmm. Communist intellectual. Breaking this conference at once. Um, I don't want to lose any more political power. Yeah, that's why we need to get more of this here. Hippogriff stage a protest. A crowd of hippogriffs stage a protest outside today. <clears throat> a local government office. Uh, they claim that the government has been unfairly prioritizing the needs of seaponies over those of hippogriffs, and they demand this alleged bias be redressed at once. They are particularly outraged because the hippogriff form is their natural form, which has served our kind well for millennia in finding it. Finding galling that we were once again listening to the seaponies after the suggestions got us years of languishing isolation when Storm King arrived, even though in the end we fought him anyways and won. The picket line make, uh, makes it impossible for the bureaucrats to work, who work in the office to get to work, and the protesters say they will not leave until the government promises to reverse course. Those are the concerns. Balanced. Ignoring them will be the best option. Break up the protesters. Seapony priority. Listen to the concerns. I don't want to lose political power, though. Um, Can we spend political power before we get anywhere? Probably not. Uh, 10 days, just like 20 more. Is anyone cheap? Down? Uh, some people are kind of cheap down here. I mean, we'll do the era stock exchange next. The world is woven together more tightly than before, unlike the current current zone wins. Trade, wealth, and prosperity are more understood as a flow than a fixed thing. Opening the air stock exchange will allow us to partake in this flow and control it to some extent. Nice. Let's see how much... Oh god, we can't get that much here, can we? So this is where we're at, huh? Ignoring them? Ah, fine, do that one. Whatever, we can wait a little longer then. God dang it. This we're so balanced. Um, agricultural reforms, like I said, not bad. More stability would be very nice, though. Even though we're 82%, that's pretty good. Lend lease. Um, I do want the civvies. Encourage private enterprises. As our nation grows, we so will its industry, but only it only blow up the nation to try to run everything centrally. There are countless talented and ambitious citizens within our nation, and we just give them some encouragement. They'll provide us with plenty of new industries. Also, I didn't say earlier, but we do have a cup of green tea here to keep us nice and uh, refreshed. So. Yeah, I think the next one, I, as much as I want Army XP really badly, I think we should probably grab uh, this one. Yeah, Silver Stream, for now. We only need roughly 50 more political power. We'll get 5% more um, here. Oh, wait, this is more political power, slightly more, barely more. Economy law cost goes down, as well as trade law cost, which is good. Summer Sun Celebrations. I'm glad we have four research loss, too. Mine and Wags, we'll get there eventually. And then we'll cut the red tape, too. Developed. Rural region, huh? Good dockyard, that's nice. Two dockyards. Nice. We can improve working conditions as well, but I don't think we'll really need that. As hero divisions, we have 16, well, of these guys. Most of them are 12 combo with, except for the Royal Hippogriff Guard, which are 18 combo with, which is not bad, but still. Happy 1007. Uh, construction speed, ooh, that'd be pretty good. Sea Pony Marine, ooh. High pressure engineering? Yeah, why not? I'll cut the industrial red tape. Our industry suffers from miles upon miles of red tape. They might have been well intentioned, but it's simply stifling us. Rationalizing the bureaucracy, doing away with some of the regulatory framework, and consolidating the management of the remainder into a new organization will benefit our economy immensely. 15% more con output. Holy crap. Holy good fathers. And some fathers are really good. Silver streams first day. Oh, wow. And what stream is this for? 
That's the outgoing records room where we put the files which were going to be sent to the National Archive to be prepared for long-term storage. That's so cool. Silverstream Store of the National Revenue Agency's HQ building has taken nearly four hours, and her guide, Swift Claw, is wondering when she'd ever stop asking these questions. Swift Claw had been glad to answer at first, enthusiastic even, but as time wore on, it became clear Silverstream would never stop asking. It reminded him of his three-year-old daughter. Swift Claw had become increasingly convinced that the new royal friendship advisor was as useless as she was annoying. As the tour finally concluded and Swift Claw bade her farewell, Silverstream announced that she thought of at least three changes which could be made to make the whole place more friendly, and said so they'd be hearing from her soon. Heading back to his co-workers for all coffee. Swiftclaw was surprised to hear them all talking about Silverstream, how friendly she was, how appreciated she, they felt when she came to them. How her questions made them feel like some Griff actually cared about what they were doing. How they hoped their kids grew up to be as kind and thoughtful as her. When Swiftclaw mentioned how she'd already said she was going to change the workplace, they all agreed that whatever she suggested would definitely make things better. Swiftclaw returned home that night a little puzzled, but curios curiously optimistic. He gave his daughter an extra hug that night and went to work the next day with a smile on his face. Maybe she knows a thing or two about friendship. Maybe, just maybe. And now this is going to slightly go up, slightly barely go up, but at least it'll help offset some of these hardliners. Oh, I love being a hardliner. It's much more fun to be a radical sometimes, you know? I'm not saying that I am, but the rising lower classes. The benefits of our booming economy has not been distributed evenly. While opening up our markets has brought the prices of goods down has made great profits for corporations, for experts in tourism, there's a rising discontent among the lower classes that they're not getting their share of their national prosperity. While before, much of the opposition to our trade policies have been from nationalists and isolationists among the middle classes, afraid of foreign competition. <coughs> Now much of the anger is coming from the proletariat, as socialist ideals once popular mainly among radical students' groups have started uh, percolating among the common worker. Uh, popular discontent is directed more and more at domestic gr business grifts rather than distant foreigners, and even at the monarchy itself, which is increasingly seen as a defender of inequality. The Constitutionalist Socialist Labour Party of Eris has been doing its best to moderate rhetoric and remind the people that Novo had been a good queen, but the Fringe Revolutionary Workers Party and the Post-Civilization Coalition of Communities. Anarchists have said in no unclear terms that the monarchy must be dissolved. I'm sure it's nothing to be worried about, right? I encourage the automotive industry. The car did have some difficulties getting established in Hippogriffia, neither being able to fly or swim, but over time, more and more of us have come to enjoy both as a tool and as entertainment. In our time, our automotive industry will be one of the uh, world's foremost. I like the stock exchange again. We get the miracle here, too. would be really good. Nice. So, our capital, we have Ain Throt Gre, which I know I'm saying wrong. Mount Airs. I love this. I love that it's impassable terrain here, and you have to go through the front here. I like that. That's really cool. Um, what is this? What's the great mountain province here? Your Mount Airs. If you don't know about that, you're ahead. Heart of Hippogriff Civilization. I love what the devs have done this mod. It's just incredible what the devs can do. Um, over here, as much as I want, like I said, I want to get more. Um, an army advisor, but the other city. I want more. We want more. We want as much as we possibly can get. And I'll probably go and grab this guy because infantry is going to be our bread and butter. Bread and butter. Butter. Oh, you want to do this again? Please go ahead. You go finding for both. Typical cleaning. Well, I don't really care. Basic heavy tank. Heard construction speed. Let's do this one. Uh. A cost of under, increasing underwater stuff. I mean, we're not going to touch it for. Oh, we can touch it again. Uh, do this one just because it doesn't hurt a construction speed as much. Nice. Fifteen percent more. Look at that. Seven percent more political power. Fifteen percent more doctored output and economy trade law costs. I mean, we can't change this at all yet, but Jesus. So, all right, getting some serious army XP. That'll be good. Um, the next thing we want to change, we probably can't change trade laws either. We could use some more pony power too, or hippogriff power, but we can't really do that either. God dang it. Uh, that's not bad. That's actually really good. Black Eyes White Wind. Uh, Zephyr Gus is not bad. I like this one, but we can't get this for this campaign. Um, I like political power. I love political power. Rocket never falls been invited to a government, huh? Oops. I have knocked my mouse somewhere else. Coral Ridge. Oh, that's not bad. It's not great. 0.05 is it's okay. An economist is okay. I don't know, 0.05 is just not enough. It's for me. Agricultural reforms? Agricultural reforms. Or national defense works first. Because you get three civvies. Modern wars are, not, are won not just on the battlefield, but in the factories as well. Once we're ready to pr produce immense amounts of weaponry for when war comes, and there's no like no time like the present to get started, of course. The socialist unions. Swimming about her throne room, Queen Nova looked over the port after report of more industries trying to form unions, and of the socialist goals these unions had to clear. Well, many said they were forming in response to rising inequality and deregulation. One look at the founding members told Nova all she needed to know. 
Skystar was with her, but as usual, her daughter underestimated the severity of the situation. Once more, Nova wondered what would happen to Hippogriffia when she was gone. We should never let get this far, Nova muttered, looking at another report. Look at this one, the glassmakers are organizing. And one of the chief organizers is Hot Breeze, who is one of Posada's top henchcrafts. I don't know, it doesn't seem so bad, said Skystar. There are modern organizers like Selena Blue that seem reasonable, uh, and besides, all kingdoms have labor movements. This isn't about a labor movement, Noble Snap. They want to get rid of us. Communists, anarchists, Posadists. Posadists. These are the new unions are full of them. You know what they do to creatures like us in Stalingrad? I should have done this a long time ago, but I'm so the queen. I'm going to ban these unions while I still can. Skystar was silent for a moment, lost in thought. Noble hadn't heard Skystar would be silent in a long time and finally embraced her daughter and her fins, holding on to her. I'm sorry, Skystar. I don't really want to crack down on her own subjects, but I haven't been this scared since the Storm King. I don't want to lose you. Skystar hugged her back, trying to find the words to tell her mother how wrong she was. Mom, I know you're scared. I know a lot of them are really weird, and, and they are, but they just want the right to negotiate on an even level with their bosses. Isn't that what harmony is all about? Every creature has a fair say? I just want a voice. We're going to have more communism. Never said I was fair, man. Alright, 1007. Um, come over here. It's usually we are lacking you some gun stuff. But not this time. Interesting. Um, armored trains don't really need them, but we'll do that anyways. Agricultural reforms. Oh, whoops. Well, I guess we'll read this one anyways. Why not? The agricultural sector has been left languishing in recent times. With all the development both internally and abroad, the time has come for delicate, dedicated effort to make sure that a farmer can keep feeding our people even if the worst happens. Heiress First Rally in Starfield. Supporters of the controversial Heiress First movement gathered together for Rally in Starfield. Waving flags for photographs of Queen Elba, the heiress first uh, supporters cheered and chanted their patriotism and rowdy display. When the leader Raphael got up on the stage, the cheers grew even louder, quickly turning to booze as he told of the latest insults coming from the zebras. Cowards that call us, he claimed, exclaimed the crowd. I have it right here from the mouth of the political chief in Coltag. Coltag. The hippogriff boasts of the victory of the Storm King as though fighting a single lucky battle after years of hiding can compare to the grueling campaigns we zebras fought against him all across the continent. We save them, and this is how they treat us, and when they come to the Zumidian refugee zones and exploit our generosity. No more, I say. Queen Noble was right to retreat to Sequestria. She was right to merge when she did, and we shall suffer no further slander to her people or her queen. The crowd's cheers were joined by the sound of propellers. As cracked lightning made a flyover in the spirit of Starfield, a custom fighter plane is shot down one of the Storm King's mighty airships with. Over the two hours of the rally, the crowd swelled from some 500 to nearly 1,000, with hundreds of passerbys and local residents getting swept up in the patriotic jubilation and setting up for the heirs' first movement. They certainly are enthusiastic, though. And let's see. Lend lease, that's okay. Want to do some friendships. Approval trade relations. Eh. Oopsie. My bad. Oh, crap. Crap. Should not click on that. But develop the outer islands. Mount Eris is a gleaming jewel of Hippogriffia, but a jewel needs a necklace to hold it. Too long we've ignored the golden ring of the islands around us, and this must be rectified. Come on down to Hippogriffonia. Our home is among the most beautiful regions of the world, and visitors agree. Opening up for tourists, enterprise will net us another source of revenue, as well as making sure that thousands of creatures across the world will go home with the positive experiences of The us. motor strike. The simmering discontent among the working class has reached a boiling point today. Despite our best efforts, auto workers in both Sequestrian and Mount Eris have walked out of their jobs in large-scale strikes, citing low wages, unsafe working conditions, and callous supervisors. This industry has gone ground to a standstill, but as the strikers are certainly not centrally organized, it's difficult to tell what would get them to get back to work. Enraged at being denied the right to unionize, several different groups have demanded everything from increased safety standards to a complete restructuring of the wage system so that every worker shares in a percentage of the profits of the company. Skyster suggests getting all the labor leaders together in one room so they can talk amongst themselves and talk with us to figure out a plan that could work for every griff. While auto industry leaders like Lucky Break have cautioned against such plans, saying that that would result in the most radical voices swaying the others, and pointed to the increasing popularity of their socialist ideologues like the anarchists and Posada. Posada. This is just simply waiting the strikers out, playing, paint, playing them off each other until their movement loses momentum. If that fails, the Queen can always sign back to work legislation force and strikers return to their jobs. Hear them out. They should return to work. But for now, let's hear them out. We got the political power for it. Um, not sure which way we want to go. Maybe superior firepower. That might be the best way to do. So, um, Sure, guys. Sure. Here, not too much else. Um, it's a little different. The three days of freedom. Today marks the end of the national celebration of the Three Days of Freedom. It's a relatively new holiday, originally created by the Queen Novo as a one-day celebration during her exile in Sequestria. After we emerged victorious of the Storm King and returned to Mount Eris, the holiday was expanded to three days. On the first day, celebrations were held all across Sequestria to thank the ocean for protecting us. Sea ponies gathered with friends and family to enjoy undersea dinners and traditional activities like sea dancing and, sea and whale singing. On the second day, festivities commence in Eris. Epigraphs celebrate the Storm King's defeat with parties and live music performance, with the largest concert being held at the Harmonizing Heights. On the third and final day, all 
creatures come together to celebrate the return of our freedom. Sea ponies and hippogriffs are encouraged to meet up on the beaches for large mixed parties. At the end of the day, parents and prominent community members give out presents for the children. And the capital queen, Nova herself, distributes presents, or presents, huh, not peasants, but presents to the local children in a special ceremony. Despite being new, the three days of freedom were already extremely popular in both Eris and Sequestria. In light of the emerging societal divide between the hippogriffs and sea ponies, many creatures see the holidays as a celebration of national unity as well as past victory. Three cheers for Hippogriffia! Eris Fur supporters attack non-traditional clothing. A member of Eris Fur has been arrested and fined for harassing a griff wearing four may clothes. The offending Hippogriff, an outwork, out-of-work tailor named Sioux Stopper, or Sew Stopper, followed the victim, shouting invectives, telling him to go back to Griffoni if he wanted to wear that, and finally escalated into a physical altercation where the victim was, show, was shoved against a wall, spreading his wing. Sioux Stopper blamed Aquilian imports for destroying his business. While many have condemned the attack as evidence of Eris Fur's xenophobic thuggery, others have expressed sympathy for Sioux Stopper's situation even if they don't approve of his actions. How worrying. Uh, so currently, we are going to be building even more under here. Let's see, total underwater building is eight. So building slots nine, fuel cells. We did get, well, we are working on a synthetic refinery, but I keep working on another city, because I want a lot, a lot, a lot of cities. We only three left, which sucks, but whatever. Um, three, a third of our total population. Number of sea ponies lost for proportion to a sea pony population. Um, yeah, not, not bad, actually, right now. We're developing the Outer Isles. We need 4% more to get up to 100%. And of course, we're going to do Come On Down to Hippogriffonia. Oh, not oh, Hippogriffia. Have I been saying Hippogriffonia the entire time? Oh, good God. Hippo, Hippogriffia. Oh, goodness. My bad. Um, requires one of the following. So we don't have to do both. Actually, we, can, we don't have to do long distance friendships, but. Eris First Rally in Squidville. A large crowds came out today in support of Eris First and a sectarian message of uh, in Squidville today. <clears throat> or protectionist message, I should say. <clears throat> The group managed to attract thousands of seaponies who see nothing to gain from foreign trade. Noted Eris First Leader Raph Wood led the rally, rallying of the seaponies and telling them that the foreign powers wanted to exploit them and that the government failed to stop it. He called upon Queen Novo to hear the voice of the little seapony and protect the question industry. He also called, uh, uh, called upon Arisian business griffs to open your eyes. There's an entire other half to a great kingdom. See, see the brave sea ponies, and work with them for the good of the whole of Eris. Do not concern yourself with the zebras of Zumidia. The future of Eris lies within these waters. Underwater conservatives made themselves heard. Huh. You'd probably go with Metorium Blaze. Carriers sound like fun. Um, I want more army XP though. Agricultural form's not bad though. Um, railway's not bad. Shell oil? It's not bad too. Research speed and more base is not bad too. Reinforce rate's not bad. Um, I don't know. This is okay. More entrenchment. We might need more entrenchment. We'll see. Ooh. That's cool. Daily supremacy support, though. Ooh. I don't know about that. Night operations penalty. Air accidents. Chance goes down. Night operations penalty. Well, let's go with night, uh, night operations. Because we'll always use night operations stuff. We'll always be doing stuff at night. Ah. Uh, Eris first rally in Canterford. Another Eris first rally was held today, this time in Canterford. Crack Lightning, who organized the rally, openly denounced the current Zoomidian administration as foreign lowlifes leeching off the hard-working hippogriffs, and called for Nova to either withdraw from the Zoomidia immediately or start making the zebras pull their weight. It made sure to clarify, however, that he did not wish for the bloodshed as a first choice, only that they pay their fair share or kindly excuse themselves from a great nation. The crowd rapidly became rowdy, trashing the park they rallied and disrupting nearby neighborhoods with chants and parties afterwards, which lasted longer than night. A coalition of local residents and progressive harmonists have called on Queen Nova to denounce Eris first as racist and inflammatory. But a spokesman for Eris First protested that the rally had been entirely legal, and that Eris First supporters have broken no laws and caused no injury to any griff's life or property. Regardless of the government's response, the size and enthusiasm of the rally goers shows that Eris First's message is reaching many hippogriffs in Canterford, so denouncing them could cause a backlash. Free speech is important, but this is growing worrying. It's right to speak, we'll say nothing. 53% goes down to 50%? Yeah, that's what I thought. 0.65, 0.6. Well, we're working on it. Oh, what did we get here? Ah. Karen, more infantry is good. The clothing partition. The clothing debate has come to a head with Ares first and their opponents to both demanding that Queen Nova take a solid position on the issue of foreign clothing hippogriffia. Ralph Woods presented a petition with thousands of signatures demanding that government workers be only allowed to wear clothing made in hippogriffia. 
uh, claiming that the influx of foreign clothing dilutes their identity and damages their economy, leading to unrest and poverty. The petitioners claim that having government employees wear foreign clothing at work sends a particularly bad message because as servants of the crown, they are also representatives of hippogriffia. It spreads the idea that foreign nations produce better cultural products than their own, which damages national unity. Hardliners within the airspace movement have de demanded the government to go even further, pointing to the lax labor laws and lower quality control standards in Griffonius are arguing that greedy griffins would still find ways to undercut and eventually destroy the airs clothing industry, even with Raph Wood's uh, proposed ban. More liberal voices have denounced the whole issue as is slightly fair and have argued that no harmless government should pass laws mandating what its, uh, its citizens wear, as doing so is an unacceptable breach of personal liberty. They've also argued that competition breeds innovation and that the exchange of fashion between Hippogriffia and other nations would cause new and exciting fashion trends to develop, which would be stifled by government issuing bans. Notably, Princess Skystar and the Silverstream have come out against the proposed ban, saying the Hippogriffia should be friendly towards other nations, with Silverstream pointing to the Griffin and Pony Friends she made in Equestria as reasons why Hippogriffids don't need to be afraid of other creatures. Will not legislate what her subject chooses to wear. We shall ban foreign clothing government from government jobs only. Full form ban clothing. Well, we gotta go with this one. There goes our stability. That sucks. Also, we get, did get straight trade with Skyfall too. So, successful revolution. Alright then. Yeah, that's not good. Eris first applies for rally permit and harmonizing heights. In the wake of the massive wave of support their movement has garnered in the recent times, Eris first has begun making preparations to hold a rally in the harmonizing heights neighborhood of Mount Eris, one of the most idyllic spots in the mountain and a popular destination for families on vacation, home to some of the oldest and grandest villas in Hippogriffia. Eris first seems to be pouring huge amounts of money and time into organizing this rally, with a planned attendance in the thousands and an elaborate sound system placed up are planned to broadcast the message across harmonizing heights. However, when they applied for the permit to hold the rally, the local mayor denied it, citing concerns that the rally would damage the neighborhood, bringing up the damage has been caused at some rallies in the past. Eris first leader Raph Wood, who was once high in Nobel's court, has appealed this rejection directly to the Queen, an act unheard of until now, requesting that she overturn the mayor's decision and allow their peaceful gathering to go ahead. Wood said in a heartfelt letter that Eris first, has always stood in support of the monarch, and merely wishes to make their message known in a location so in tune with the traditions of the nation they hold dear, as well as assuring that he and Crack Lightning had already put plans in place to ensure that the rally did not ruin the scenery. Finally, also argued that the mayor's decision was motivated by anti Eris first bias and pre existing political agendas against him, and that any other Erisian would allow him to hold the rally. While there's nothing truly illegal about the attempted rally, the concerns of the mayor are valid, and allowing this petition to be received by the Queen could make a show of official support for the, for the monarch. I refuse to hear the petition. It's a right approved request. Hippogriffia has never seen politics like this. Uh, I don't know what you're doing. Hippogriff miracle. Oh, they announced the government, though. Mass today on the streets of Mount Eris, as Eris first rally is set to be held, it has become a point of martyrdom for one of its leaders, Crack Lightning. Speaking to the small town outside of Mount Eris, as well as broadcasted over the radio, he has rallied against the government's choice to prevent his rally from taking place, stating, This government claims to wish uh, to bring principles of freedom to our nation, yet they have somehow forgotten the freedom of speech. The hippogriffs of Mount Eris wish to hear our truth, and some of they allow one corrupt mayor to prevent us from speaking? Lightning's remarks were echoed by other Eris first speakers around the country, but the results seem to be lacking. The government's refusal to allow the rally to go ahead seems to have taken some steam out of the movement, especially since the Queen herself made no comment on the issue. Lightning was, however, quick to separate the Queen from the government, saying, Oh, Queen, no, well, how they have failed to deceive you. One day you will see that, uh, shall see that we only fight for your good. And you shall rid yourself of those discussing foreign lackeys who hold you hostage. Queen Noble declined to comment on this as well. Free speech alone goes so far. Then I guess it's not really free speech, but no, we're not here for that today. From the shadows under the sea, our civilization has risen high. Golden skyscrapers now tower tall across Mount Eris, rising out of the sea and binding her peoples together stronger than ever before. Hippogriffia is now the shining, prosperous jewel of Zeprica, as she was always meant to be. Stability, political power? Yes, please. We love that. Megapolis region type. And two more cities. Yay! Over here and get some more cap. We like the cap. But we like the cast a lot. Hippogriff stage protest. All the crowd of hippogriffs have stage protest at a local government office. I'll get this again. Please go ahead. The National Automotive Convention as well. Right now, where are we at? We are sea pony leaning. Um, increase the oh, construction cost by five, huh? Oh, okay, we know where it's so. Princess Sky Star suppressed the yawn as she wandered through the hall. The Arisian Economic Society was hosting a national automotive convention, bringing together leading economists and business groups. Because Queen Noble was unavailable, Sky Star had to represent the monarchy at this event, even though she didn't know much of anything about the automobile industry. If she had to listen to one more lecture on the benefits of sustainable growth, she might not be able to stay awake. 
Scott wishes she could be doing something more important, like recruiting promising candidates uh, for government service. Harmonic absolutism was becoming increasingly impractical in the modern world. Hippogriffia needed to, to democratize and allow talented creatures from different backgrounds to attain high office. If there was someone in government with expertise in economic matters, they could help strengthen the kingdom's economy. Not to mention that that person would be the one attending boring conventions like this. The princess stopped when she noticed a large crowd in the corner of the room. They were listening to a blue hippogriff who spoke with much more energy than the other presenters. I'm a statistician by heart, but I've spent five years working as a consultant for car companies. In that time, I've had to force creatures to think deeply about their problems and address them realistically. It's a strategy called scientific management. Take my time at Circus Talent Claus Factory, for example. On my first day, I asked him questions about every little thing till he was red in the face, but I took what I learned and used it to find all the inefficiencies and slowdowns in the production line. Once we ironed those out, productivity increased by over 100%. The audience burst into applause, and Skystar joined in. Maybe she thought what Hippogriffio needs now is someone like that. And for that, we will go with Harmony Ball. We have uh, weathered the crisis and come out stronger for it. And in light of how close we came to losing our way, Queen Oval has announced a new series of reforms to bring us closer to other harmonic nations and a united own kingdom and friendship. Hippogriffio will always be a bastion of harmony. Good. Rocket never fall. Princess Skystar pro a rocket never fall said. In storm tone formally confident, it is a pleasure to meet you. To what do I owe the honor? I just want to say that I really enjoyed your presentation on scientific management. It was a highlight of the whole conversation. Or convention, uh, Scott replied with a smile. Thank you, Princess. That means a lot. I'm interested in learning more about your consulting strategies. Uh, would you be willing to discuss them with me, perhaps over lunch? Certainly, Princess. Just name a time and place, and I'll clear my schedule. Thank you so much. I think this could be a great opportunity for both of us. Should we meet again, Mr. Neverfall? Should we meet again? Political power, stability, what's not the love? Banning communism? We might have to end up doing that. Or the air's first movement. We'll see, though. I don't want to rush things. Not yet. Nice. The magic of mathematics. Rocket never fall. Never looked down at his coffee. Oh, well, looked down at his coffee and then pushed his glasses back up. To his beak. Let me get this straight. Uh, before continuing. Uh, <clears throat> you want me to become a government minister? Yeah, it's a thing I grew up with your talents. Could do a lot of good, Princess Skystar said before continuing eating meal. It's an interesting proposition, Rocket saw, but I'm not sure I'd be the right fit. I don't know anything about how the government works. Then you'd be in good company, Skystar put a fork down. This kingdom has been an absolute monarchy for its entire history, so the number of creatures with actual government experience is pretty small. Ever since we returned from the sequestria, my mother and I have been bringing in new faces to advise us on all kinds of things. You can join them in learning the business of government. Rocket scratches, chin, seriously considering the ideal. I need you to promise me final say over hiring and decision making in my department. My management strategies have encountered resistance in the past, and I want to be sure I can actually make a difference. Realizing she had pulled off a tough sell, Skystar grinned that can certainly be arranged. It's a deal. But we're not going to get him yet. Uh, I like the reinforcement a lot, though. Base is good, though, too. Mm. Ground support's really strong. You get artillery attack or defense? That's not bad. That's a little different than normal. Naval XP, carriers. Oh, we're pretty focused on carriers, aren't we? We have only two, three. We have three now. We have carrier fighters, carrier naval bombers. We do have those. Um, carriers are pretty bad, though. The time's recording. What? Go and grab that. Let's go and grab these guys as well. Um, I'm gonna assume we can get more attack. Our defense. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be okay. So let's grab Skybeak next. So after that, industrial mobilization. The mountain awakes. Oh, the cold who would be king? After the final battle of the Storm King, Princess Skystar was horrified by what she saw. In Zemidia, the Yeti armies had left the country completely devastated, its economy in tatters, and its population traumatized. One of the saddest things of Princess Hera was the story of Zemidia's king, Crown Prince Zanmi, was barely more than a foal when the storm king invaded, but the conqueror showed him mercy. After executing his mother and father, the Yetis locked Zanmi in a dungeon. He remained there alone and neglected until the hippogriffs defeated his captors. On days like this, when Skystar was in Ein Throttlegreit on official business, she always made time to visit the young king. Hello, Zamni. He bowed slowly. Good evening, Princess Skystar. It's a pleasure to see you. Um, Zamni, you don't have to be so formal. Just call me Skystar. The young zebra sigh. My tutors keep telling me I need to behave in a well ma manner befitting a royal. They say appearance is very important for kings. Well, it's true that the kings need to behave regally in public. There's no need to act that way among friends. As the pair settled into the usual routine of playing a board game, Zamni seemed to dwell on the princess's words. Is it important for kings to have friends, he asked? Of course. Spending time with friends is important for every creature. Skystar replied, beaming with joy. Zomni's eyes widened. Since you're my friend, can you take me outside the palace so I can explore the city? Skystar's uh, fr smile became a frown. I don't think your regency council would like that very much, but don't worry. I promise when you're older, I'll take you to Mount Eris and give you a full tour. Thank you. I'd like that, Zomni said again. It's just that being king. Another thing I'd have to wait till I'm older to do. 
Royal, not every child needs a friend. And the beggar in the throne room. Queen Noble was shocked today to find a grimy beggar in her throne room on Mount Eris. The hippogriff pleaded with the queen, telling her that she, the shelter he was staying had been condemned and he had nowhere to go. As he spun his tragic tale, Noble hissed to her advisor to get Silverstream, who could always be relied upon in a few tense situations, but she was nowhere to be found. Tensions, of course, rose as Noble deliberated. Uh, with some of her curt tears, demanding the beggar be removed from the throne room as he began accusing the queen herself of not caring about the plight of the poor. The poor who always attended court sessions scribbled furiously. Finally, Noble rose from her throne, her face betraying outrage, uh, whether that was at this hypocrite's situation or as an impertinence. No griff could say. Silence in the room, she spoke. We need social reform, and we need it now. You are a failure. There's no one to blame but yourself. Well, we can have social reform right now. It's fine. Encourage migration to visit the Zimmer Accords, huh? Hippogriff C pointing friendship. Uh, the greatest threat to the national unity comes not from the outside ideas, but from distrust between hippogriffs and sea ponies. We should put every available resource into promoting understanding and uh, friendship between the two peoples. Yeah, we can't even do that side, so we have to think about this side too. The Zimmer Accords, self rule. The Warzenin request. Well, Hippogriffia has maintained a policy of isolationism for most of our history. Warzenia has always been an exception. A harmonist, a monarchy like ourselves, we frequently trade and mingled with them even when we didn't want anything to do with the wider world. Sky has been particularly heartbroken when she heard that Warzen had been sacked by the Storm King and their plight nearly caused us to break our sequestration, sequestration before we were ready. Now the King has sent his envoy asking to guarantee their independence and reaffirm our long lasting friendship. They're especially worried about. Uh, Cheer up to an aggression, telling horrible tales of slave raids and comparing them to the new strong king. They say that they need our help to deter the corruptors from attacking. Of course, it's no inconvenience to us. They won't try anything. Tell they won't. Good God, we need more war sport. Good Lord, we need more war sport. Bait, five percent base. Um, you know what? We'll probably just go spirit firepower. Probably. Terrafins. Interesting. Helicopters. Huh. We'll go ahead for now. Is that worth it? Eh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see in the end. Oh, wow, we got quite a few cities. Nice. I love it. How do you get more investment? Refine underwater construction techniques versus and or aquasis construction. Eris versus protests against imported cars, of course. Uh, Eris versus sprung into action after a sensationalist news story broke in the Eris Times. A wing made car from Lucky Brakes Auto Dealership suffered a brake malfunction, sending a family three careening into a telephone pole, leaving no survivors. In the wake of the tragedy, nearly 200 protesters gathered outside uh, Lucky Brakes Car Dealership, picking the entrance and refusing to even leave when, they t when the day turned to night and a rainstorm swept across their hastily erected camp. Lucky Break was nowhere to be found, but protest organizer and AF founder Raph Wood told reporters that his followers would not leave until Lucky Break promised to stop buying wing and a new Mayor Lander automobiles. As a disgrace, he exclaimed, Lucky Break knows that we produce perfectly good cars, and yet she insists on bringing in products from halfway across the world, damaging our economy and putting more and more of these foreign death traps on the road. Every Griff knows that wing and New Maryland governments are subsidizing the companies. Every Griff knows that they don't play fair. Well, we've had enough, and we won't leave until something is done about this. While the police managed to disperse the protesters after the third day, numerous newspaper editorials have come out supporting them. With Lucky Break and other industry leaders refusing to answer the protesters' demands, they have turned to the government in hopes of getting a ban on the import of car foreign cars. Ban them? We're not going to ban imports. Limited democratic representation. Reform the Royal Advisory Court. Well. Is a core. Oh, is this not a core? It's not a core. It's an occupied state. I didn't even realize that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, engineers. How much do we actually have? Should have local autonomy. 0.44, huh? Fire Lucky Breaks Car Dealership, huh? Shocking news today shook Eris as a trio of arsonists set fire to Lucky Breaks Car Dealership in the small hours of the night. Uh, the three grits were all members of the Eris first and have expressed no regrets over their actions, which caused over a million bits worth of damage to the building and the vehicles within. When questioned, the perpetrator said they were only doing what the government refused to do by striking at the greedy Lucky Break, who was endangering our lives and our livelihoods. Eris first spokesman, Raph Wood, has condemned their actions, although he has, as he sympathizes with their situation, has urged him to plead guilty in the prosecution to show a little mercy to the three hypocrites down out of luck. We cannot have harmony if I cannot accept others. Say nothing, they'll be judged fairly. More harmony support means not very much to me, so. There's no more stability, it's fine. 
with limited democratic organization. First royal parliament. I kind of I like more political power. Reform the royal advisory council. In previous generations, the queen was advised by council of commoners. The extreme measures necessitated by the storm king's arrival disrupted this council, and since then its seats have been empty. We should revive the council and give it limited administrative powers, subjects of royal, subject to royal veto. Those, of course. Our zebra citizens. A perfect union. Unite the hippogriffs and sea points into a permanent union. Um, will that limit us about primacy here? The Marxist has not completed the focus of the Marxist revolution. Okay. Okay. Um, perfect union. After years of disagreement, the hippogriffs and sea ponies are finally seeing eye to eye. To mark the at, we are no just longer a realm of one race, but two. We shall proclaim the king United Kingdoms of Heirs, forever linking hippogriff and sea pony in friendship and harmony. Even though they still might want to kill each other eventually, but whatever. So how do we get this one? The refined underwater construction techniques. That's initiative. Oh, is there a right there? Ew. Social Union, huh? Well, actually, with this one, we just need this one. Do we want this one or this one? I like that. Versus this one is over here. But you need both of these to get that one. That one's okay, like I said. That 15% output is not bad, though. But would I rather have planes or ships? I honestly would rather have planes, probably. They should disagree. Of course they do. Why would they not? Increase construction plus by 5%. That's fine. Oh, oh here it is. Propaganda. Uh, we could do that. I'm kind of fine with it costing us like that for now. It's not costing us that much, so I'm not too worried about that. Encourage migration. The advisory council assembles. Or assemble, yeah. Did the royal advisory council re reconvene for the first seven years? This body of commoners used to advise the queen on many matters of state, but the Storm King's invasion disrupted its operations. Now the council has been revived, with its membership consistent, consisting mostly of political newscomers. The council set Matt in a hall on Mount Airs with the Queen Novo, members of the extended royal family, and the e many eager spectators in attendance. Unfortunately, the inexperience of the new councillors created unforeseen problems. Many of them appeared absolutely starstruck in the presence of the Queen and other royals, and their opening speeches contained nothing but excessive praise for the Queen's or Her Majesty's government. The council continued in this manner until Silverstream suddenly turned towards the Queen and blurted out, I'm confused, if they only wanted to flatter you, couldn't they have just sent in fan mail? After a brief silence, Queen Noble began to laugh, as did the councillors. This moment seemed to have break the ice, and the councillors then spoke on several local and national issues they wished to bring to the government's attention. Um, the Queen listened attentively to each of their speeches and promised that her government would work to address all their concerns. Though the Queen still rules in Kipogriffia, she's always looking for input from her subjects. Well, that's nice. Commandeer trains? We could if we really wanted to, but eh, for now we're okay. Yeah, let's get some offense. Why not? Right, Skybeak? That's right. Hippogriff Sentry. Ooh. Requires a perfect union. We got a lot of political power and stability. Um, we have emerged from the Tower Isles of the Lost Fears more united and stronger than ever before. Ready to lead on the path of harmony. No matter what the 11th century holds, we'll be ready for it and we will always stay true to our deals. Uh -huh. Or maybe this is on a historical. Whoa, uh, these new? That's impassable train. That's not. That wasn't there last time, was it? I don't think it was. Did I think the, did the mod developers add more impassable train? Oh my goodness, Yak Yakistan. Yeah, definitely over here. Oh yeah. Oh, that's definitely interesting. Yeah, they definitely add. That's definitely different. I don't remember these before, so that's really cool. Anything else over here too? Oh, else? Yeah. Nice. Oh, wait, who's down here? Carthinian Pact. What? Oh, it goes to the Kingdom of Abyssinia down here, too. Mergypt. 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 Ancient Pact. Queen Karuk. King. Nice. Well, we're ready slightly for war. Slightly. But uh, you never know. Mekilza Atagan, Revered Agild. 
power base. That's cool. I could definitely use more, more manpower. But a power too, but manpower definitely. Hippogriff Century, I guess. No, I don't know. Self rule. Limited democratic representation. North Zeprican Union. North Zeprican Federation. Expand the mines. I don't know. I like both. But you know what? I'll leave this up to you. This makes the consequences of living the North Zeprican War more severe. Uh, should we do encourage migration? Or should we do or visit the Zerma Accords? Let me know in the comments below. I'll let you guys decide. Which one of these two should we do? I'm completely open to either side here, really. Uh, continue Navy modernization. Although our Navy is already one of the most powerful in the world, we cannot afford to be lax. Must ensure Navy is always ahead of the competition. As an island nation, with the Navy will determine whether we live or die. And I think we'll just go with Hippogriff currency. We can't afford to cower in the depths any longer. The world's changing. If we are to take our place as a preeminent nation among the peoples of the world, it's time to change too. Establish Air Armament Committee. As the world recovers from the Storm King's defeat, it's more important than ever to make sure that we have a strong air force to keep our people safe. Whether that's fighters to protect our own airspace or bombers to take out the enemy's ability to wage war, we have to be ready for whatever the world throws at us. Very true. Very, very true. But then let's finish this focus and then we'll call it an episode. Unite. That is in society. Oh, we just need to unite it. Oh! Unite. Well, you know, go and do that. Unite Arisian society. More political power, stability. United Kingdom of Eris. Has a divided society. Oh, so it doesn't even matter now. Okay. Ugabi? What is Ugabi? Well then, happy 1009, everybody. Got two days left. Middle Sea Treaties. Can't create our own faction. More political power, more stability. What's not to love? But if you enjoyed the video... Oh. Hey, I got rid of... Split isolation. We're only isolationists now. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow. As we'll hopefully end up going to war with somebody here. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.